Hey everyone, and welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, VFX, and animation. I'm your host, Sean Frangella, and today we're talking about my top five new features of Photoshop CC 2015. So you might be thinking, I just said motion graphics, why are we talking about Photoshop? Or I just want to know about Photoshop, I don't even know about animation. If you're doing motion graphics, Photoshop is still a useful tool and it's good to know some stuff. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. And Photoshop is so versatile that it's used by designers, animators, photographers, and all sorts. So if you're in any of those categories, we got some tips for you too. We'll talk about new features across the board with some examples I got for everything from graphic design, mobile application design, photography, and even some 3D stuff. So let's get started with my top five new features of Photoshop CC 2015. Number one, updated layer styles. So what I got here is just this basic design with some text and there's been a lot of updates to layer styles and how they work. If I go to layer, layer style, let's say I wanted to add a stroke. We just add our basic stroke and add it around there. And now you'll see with some layer styles, there's this plus. And this is really useful because say if you wanted to have a word like the word words with multiple strokes, you had to copy the layer and do all sorts of stuff. Now, if I wanted another stroke, I just press plus and I get the second one and I can make a different color, like a dark blue, go to okay. And then I can get that second stroke and maybe not use such an ugly blue that makes this look terrible. And we can add up to 10 if we wanted to for some reason. So we could keep going and it's all on the same layer and layer style. And you could do this with other ones too. If we wanted an inner shadow to come from the left, we could add that in. And then maybe we want another one so it doesn't look realistic at all, but that's fine. We can get another extra little one, maybe change the blending mode of just that one to something different like soft light or lighten or screen or something. And you could check these on and off and add multiple copies of all sorts of effects and really push what you could do with layer styles on just one instance of it. So here we've totally changed this with layer styles. Now we got a gradient. We could add drop shadows to our heart's content. Even have a second drop shadow for some reason if you're just really into drop shadows and change the angle. And this really helps you really customize this a lot. And then I can go to OK. And then it's all on just one layer style. And then if I go back in there, if I have all these instances and I want to delete any of them, I could just press delete with the trash can icon. And if you accidentally delete everything, say you're down here and you deleted both your drop shadows and you're worried that you're never going to be able to use drop shadow again, don't worry, you can get them back right here if you ever need to add them back in. And there's your world famous drop shadow right back in there. And the other thing that's really useful is that the layer styles will remember your last setting, which is great. So I did this, all of this work. Maybe I have this other word and I want to add a layer style gradient. Well, I'm probably going to want to start with this one that I was using and now it's going to drop in whatever my last used one rather than resetting it to black and white. And that's great. It's you kind of figure that's probably what you want of what you are just doing and not need to remake that whole one. So really useful stuff, some great new tools with layer styles in the 2015 update. Let's keep going with more features. Number two, quick export. So say that you're working on a cool little mobile application design or something, and you get to the end of the project and you need to export all these little icons and buttons as separate PNGs, or you just have a big file and you want to send chopped down layers as PNGs. Well, that was kind of a pain in the butt part of a project like that. But now what we can do is if we select anything, we can right click and go to quick export as PNG. And it's going to ask me to find a folder and I'll go to this PNGs one I made. And if I do open, it's going to run that in the background. And now if I look in that PNGs folder, it's saved out each of those graphics as a transparent PNG scaled exactly to the size of that image. And that's super useful if you have different layers, or even if you just had a big Photoshop file where you just wanted to snap all the layers as PNGs, you could just select all the layers, right click, quick export as PNG, open, and we can see it's going to very quickly run. And there we have all of these. And one little trick with this, if I just delete all those, maybe we don't want each layer. Maybe we just want 
a solid button of each of these shapes. Well, if we select layer folders, if I just grab everything, right click, right click, quick export, open. Now it's just gonna export those folders. So we can see we have one solid image of those. And this replaces some of the idea of what was save for web. If we go to file export, we see save for web as legacy. And now it's this quick export as PNG. And if you wanted this quick export to have different settings, you can go to export preferences. And here's our option. So we could change that to something like a JPEG if you were saving out JPEGs all the time, GIFs or GIFs or whatever it's, or however everyone's saying it these days. And we can just drop this back to PNG. You can check on and off transparency. So that's where those preferences are. So if you need to quickly export layers or folders as chopped up transparent PNGs, you can do that really easily with this quick export as PNG update in Photoshop CC 2015. All right, let's keep going. Let's talk about the next one, which is libraries. So here I have this Photoshop file with a bunch of layer styles that I've added. And a big thing they're pushing with CC 2015 is this libraries option, which if I go to window libraries, this will come up as well as just everything being connected and working across different computers or spaces or offices. So maybe as I'm working on this, I know that this crazy setting with a bunch of colors and shadows is my theme across a big campaign that's being used on a lot of projects and location and people working in all sorts of different offices, what I can do is change things like these layer styles or characters or even foreground and background colors in my new libraries panel. And if you're signed into Creative Cloud 2015, this will all work and it'll be on your account. And what we can do is click to add this layer style as an example, and now it saves that. So say I had a new document with some new text. I have that in my library and I can just double click and it'll add it to that. And the useful thing of this is if you are on a different computer, it's now stored and will be there. And it's storing all this way up out in the cloud. So you can get a link to this and send it to other people too. If we wanted to send this out to the team very quickly, we could right click and go to share a link and it's going to open up your browser, show you where that is. You could create a public link, right click, copy that link, or even type in email addresses and send that. And then people can just download this super awesome layer style setting. And you have that across multiple computers and locations all at once. So there's a lot you can do with this new library setting. And it's a really useful way if you're working across different computers or a big team in different locations. It's a, it's a really useful little new update to Photoshop CC 2015. All right, let's keep going. Let's talk about 3D in Photoshop for a minute with our next new feature, number four, 3D updates. In Photoshop, if we go to Window Workspace 3D, we get this whole other crazy 3D workspace that can be a little intimidating to people, but there's two new things that they added that really are useful if you do a lot of 3D work or if you're just getting 3D files and need to know what to do with them. One is letting you quickly and easily create bump and normal maps. And the other is the option to, to simplify a mesh if you have an existing model and you just need to take down the complexity a bit. So if you're working with 3D and you have an image that you want to use as a texture, say I have this ice texture that I've used before when I need to create 3D objects that have ice. If I wanted to create a bump map, which is a black and white image that'll create highs and lows in the texture without needing to add geometry. What I used to do is open this up and then go to image adjustments, black and white, adjust it from there, save this down. And if you wanted to do a normal map, which is a much more useful texture image, but a little more complex, it was a lot more complicated. Now what we can do is quickly and easily create these right in Photoshop and then either keep them in Photoshop or save them out for your 3d program of choice. So if I just had a new file, I'll just make a new file of 2000 by 2000 and I'm in my 3d workspace. If I just want to get a basic object to create some textures from, I can go to my 3d and I'll go to mesh from preset and grab any of these. I'll grab a sphere because that's a good starting point and I'll press create in my 3d panel. If I click the sphere material and go to properties, this is all the material properties. So if you were in 3d, this is how you'd be building a texture. But if you're in Photoshop, it works 
Similarly, if we wanted to put this ice texture on this sphere, what we can do is change diffuse by clicking edit texture. And then I'll just select all of this image, copy and paste. And I can just rotate and scale this into place here. Press enter and save this. Now I have a sphere with those ice textures. So that's great. And if we're in a 3D program like Cinema 4D or Maya, that's kind of where we'd start. If we'd have an object like this and we add the material under color and then we want to add a bump or normal map. Well, rather than just changing the image to black and white in Photoshop, what we can do is click on our sphere material and for bump or normal, we can click this folder icon and go to generate bumps from diffuse. And when I click that, it'll open up this little window where it will take the diffuse texture, which in this case is the ice, and let me edit how this bump map is going to be created. And if I wanted to get a really useful file out of this, I'll just click cancel. I could create a normal map very easily with just one button. I'll click this folder button, generate normals from diffuse. And now it's going to create this normal map, which is even more useful because it's getting a more three-dimensional representation of this rather than just black and white. And I can adjust my contrast details to my liking, and that looks pretty good. And then I can click OK. And it's going to update that and be more believable. And this is really useful no matter what 3D program you're working because you can grab those images that you just created and save them out. So if I go to my diffuse edit texture, I could save this out as a TIFF in this folder that I quickly made. So I'll just save this as ice main, TIFF, PNG, whatever you want to, and uncheck layers and save. And then I can go grab that normal map by going to normal, edit texture, and same thing, save this out. I'll call this ice normal map as a TIFF with no layers, save. And I'll save it as 32-bit with no compression. And then if I go into my 3D program, what I can do is load in that new ice texture. And then on the normal map here in Cinema 4D, I'll click on normals, load that texture up, and look at all that detail that's created just from that image to make this a lot more believable. And it's a super useful way to create quick normal maps from any texture very easily in Photoshop. As a heavy 3D artist, I'm really excited about how easy that is and how useful it's gonna be for creating custom textures. And the other thing that's useful is there's this new option for simplify meshes. So here I have this Stanley Cup model that I made in 3D that is back in Chicago in real life too. And if I wanted to take the complexity of this down a bit, I could really easily do that. If I go to info, there are about 260,000 polygons. And if I go to 3D simplify meshes, it's gonna bring open this window and I can very easily save down the complexity of this geometry. So even if you don't know much about 3D, this is useful if you just get were asked to do this. And if I go too far, it's not gonna be anything anymore because it's not complex enough. And if we're trying to make it much simpler, but keep the look, we could even generate a normal map from the original geometry, which is super useful if you're into 3D and trying to optimize things for games or mobile or anything like that. So whether you're heavy into 3D animation and modeling, or you just want to kind of understand it, there's those couple new useful 3D features in Photoshop CC 2015 that are really useful. Number five, better blurs. So let's talk about a new photography update. Here I have this photo of myself and I've isolated me with the idea that maybe I want to throw just the top of this background out of focus and kind of manipulate this photo a little bit. So if I get my marquee rectangle, I'll add some feathering, select this, and I just want to make this background a bit out of focus. There's some new updates to push that a little further and make it a little more believable. What I can do is go to filter blur gallery and pick any of these. So I'll just pick field blur. And now I can change the blur amount that's being added. And the new option is this noise. So if we're adding a blur, we might want to get a little bit of noise and we can change what that noise looks like. And if I zoom in here, we can really see how that's adjusting as part of the blur. So if we're editing a photo, we might want to add in some 
Gaussian noise or uniform noise just to make it feel like it's believable and accurate. And then if I click apply, it's going to apply that blur to my selection. And I could use that for all sorts of stuff. So it looks like I'm popping out a little too much from the background. If I wanted to fix that on this layer, I could command click to grab a selection and go to select modify border. And I'll use a width of eight, go to okay. And if I want to add that same blur to just the edges here, I can go to filter blur gallery, which was my last one or command F and it's going to apply that same thing where it'll add the blur and the grain and soften the edges. So it feels a little bit more like I'm falling into the background there. So there's some new useful updates in our blur gallery to add noise and grain into just our blur selections. So there's a lot of useful little features in Photoshop CC 2015. There's many more for linking and artboards and all sorts of stuff. These are just my top five. If we're really thinking about when we're in the middle of working on a project, what's the most useful. And if you want to learn more about top features in other new apps such as After Effects, Element 3D, and others, be sure to check out the other videos I have on my top five updates to those apps by clicking on the link buttons. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube to get new videos on motion graphics, animation, and my top features to all sorts of new applications. There's some pretty fun stuff added to Photoshop that we can do all sorts of new stuff. I it's stuff I've been having fun poking around with, and I hope you learned a lot about the Photoshop CC 2015 updates. Thanks for watching, and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.